Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at another historic deck, this time a mono blue Antiquities War deck, which features some of the anthology cards including Ornithopter and Mindstone, but the centerpiece of the deck here is our 4 mana Antiquities War Saga. It's an enchantment and has two chapters where we get to look at the top 5 cards of our library, reveal an artifact card from among them and put it into our hand, and the rest goes on the bottom. So the turn we play it and on the following turn we get to search up some artifacts, and then on the third chapter Artifacts we control become artifact creatures with base power and toughness 5-5 five five until end of turn, so all our artifacts, including non-creatures, turn into 5-5s five to smash the opponent and usually win the game on the spot. The deck is filled with cheap artifacts that we can find with the first couple chapters, so we can very quickly fill the board while the Antiquities goes off, and then we're usually set up for the third chapter to win us the game. So a very powerful game-ending enchantment that even provides a bit of card advantage as well. So this is the centerpiece of the deck, but we've got a ton of powerful support cards that can win us the game even if we don't find Antiquities. Let's start by going over some of the legendary creatures in this deck that play an important role. We've got the full playset of Emery, Lurker of the Lock, Normally costs 3 mana, but costs 1 generic mana less to cast for each artifact we control. And when Emery enters the battlefield, we get to put the top 4 cards of our library into our graveyard, helping us fill the graveyard full of artifacts to then use with her ability as we can tap Emery, choose an artifact in our graveyard, and we can cast that card this turn. So it provides a steady stream of card advantage, as we can not only get back cards that uh, we milled over with Emery, but we've got plenty of artifacts that we can also sacrifice for value and then recycle with our Emery. So a very strong card in this deck that we can usually cast for a single blue mana thanks to the cost reduction and then the other very important legendary creature in this deck is Sai Master Thopterist 3 mana for a 1-4 that says whenever we cast an artifact spell we get to make a 1-1 Thopter artifact creature token with flying so great synergy with the Antiquities War as our deck is filled with cheap artifacts that we can find with the first two chapters and then Sai in combination with those cheap artifacts can just generate an army of Thopter tokens that then on the third chapter will turn into 5-5 five five flying Thopters that can usually end the game on the spot and for one and a blue we can also sacrifice two artifacts to draw a card which can be useful especially against sweeper effects if we expect our opponent to play sweeper we can keep up some mana and then before the sweeper resolves cash in some of our thopter tokens for additional cards to help us rebuild after the sweeper resolves and also has a bit of synergy with emery as we can sacrifice artifacts and then replay them from the graveyard so these are some of the core cards in the deck. Another very powerful card is Steel Overseer, 2 mana for a 1-1 one, one artifact creature, and then can tap to put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on each artifact creature we control. So that in combination with the army of Thopter tokens that Sai provides can also easily win us the game without needing antiquities, and we have a lot of cheap artifact creatures that will benefit from those plus 1 plus 1 counters. And an important interaction to point out is that when we reach the third chapter of Antiquities and our creatures become 5-5s, five they still get plus 1 plus 1 for each plus 1 plus 1 counter placed on them by the Steel Overseer, so they can be larger than 5-5s. Five so between Steel Overseer, Emery, Sai and Antiquities, these are kind of the four cards that reward us for playing all these artifacts, but we've got a lot of other powerful cards here, so we'll take a look at the rest of the deck. At 0 mana we've got the full playset of Ornithopter, looks like a funny card, 0 mana for a 0-2 Flying Thopter, but it does fit in the deck nicely as a free way to uh, trigger our Psy for example, we can potentially play a turn 1 Emery if we really want to, just by playing some cheap 0 mana cards, and of course if we find it with Antiquities we can also play it for free, so mana is usually not a constraint when uh, putting additional artifacts in play to set up for that third chapter to kill the opponent, as this will turn into a 5-5 creature with flying, so still keeps its ability as well. Then we also have the full playset of Mox Amber, and I don't have to tell you that historically Moxen are very powerful cards in Magic, as they can generate free mana essentially, and with four copies of Emery and four copies of Psy, Mox Amber can reliably make blue mana in this deck and allow for those very explosive starts, and also another free artifact to help us make more Thopters with Psy, set up a lethal Antiquities War, or a speed up an Emery. Then we also have the full 4 copies of Ginger Brute as a nice 1 mana 1-1 one, one with haste, can also become unblockable except by creatures with haste, so we can also activate that ability on the 3rd chapter of Antiquities War to get in 5 damage guaranteed, which can also help us get across the finish line, can also sacrifice it to gain life, so against a burn deck for example, we can recycle Ginger Brute from the graveyard with Emery to gain a lot of life, which can also come up. 
Then we also have four copies of Witching Well as a one mana artifact. When it enters the battlefield, we get to Scry 2, so it can help us find the Antiquities and the other payoff cards in the deck if we don't have them already. And then later in the game for four mana, as you can see, we don't have a ton of four mana plays in the deck, so sacrificing a Witching Well at four plays out quite well. We get to draw two cards, and then we can also get it back with Emery from the graveyard. Then we also have two copies of Stonecoil Serpent, which is more of a flex slot in this deck. I've tried a few different cards instead of the Serpent, but I've been pretty happy with it so far. It's also just a flexible card, besides being one of the flex slots in the deck, as an X casting cost creature comes into play with X plus 1 plus 1 counters on it, so also has a synergy between plus 1 counters and the Antiquities War. Also has a Reach and Trample, so if it turns into a 5-5 with those additional plus 1 plus 1 counters, it will also trample over, so it keeps that evasion. And protection from multicolored means it can be bounced by Teferi or turned into an Elk by Oko for what it's worth. So overall, just a nice card in the deck. Other cards worth considering over Stone Cold Serpent, I've tried Voltaic Servant, which plays nicely with Steel Overseer, as on our end step, we can untap Steel Overseer to then tap it again to add more counters. But of course, if they deal with Steel Overseer, the Voltaic Servant doesn't do a whole lot by itself. I've also tried Sahili at 3 mana to generate more servo tokens to kind of do a similar thing to Sai. But if you look at the deck, we have mostly creatures, so Sahili didn't end up making all that many servo tokens, so I ended up cutting it. Also, it also has neat synergy with Steel Overseer, where we can potentially turn one of our artifacts into a Steel Overseer to put more plus one plus one counters on our creatures. Maybe if you're playing best of three, Sahili could be a good sideboard option, but uh, I ended up cutting it from the main deck and going with the Stone Cold Serpent instead. And then the last spell in the main deck that we haven't covered yet is Mindstone, another one of those anthology cards that uh, fits perfectly into this deck as a two-mana artifact, taps to add Colros to our mana pool, and we can also pay one, tap it, and sacrifice it to draw a card. So great synergy with Emery, as we can recycle the Mindstone over and over again to draw more cards. Playing a turn 2 Mindstone can set up a turn 3 Antiquities, and then by turn 5 we can usually kill the opponents by assembling enough artifacts, so that's usually the fastest our deck can kill. But our deck is also capable of some very explosive things with Mox Amber, so there's a lot of ways we can end up with an early Antiquities War to win the game. Then going over the mana base, we're currently playing 16 basic islands, no real need for Castle Ventress, as we're usually spending our mana on sacrificing Witching Wells in the late game instead of scrying with Castle. We've got two copies of Karn's Bastion as a nice value land to go with our Steel Overseer to proliferate and put more plus one counters on our creatures. And then four Zelfern Voids, which enters the battlefield untapped and lets us scry one, some more card selection to help us find those key payoff cards. We could potentially fit in one or two more colorless lands instead of islands, since we don't need a ton of blue mana, but I also don't want to push my luck and uh, I want to keep the deck as consistent as possible. So yeah, that's the deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. All right, we're on the draw with a great hand. Gonna wait to play Mox Amber until we play Psy. Could potentially also hold the Ginger Brutes, since it looks like we are winning with Antiquity, so the chip damage early doesn't really matter. All right, opponent might be on the Field of the Dead deck. I guess we can play Void here. And look for a fourth land to make sure we don't miss out on turn four antiquities. Although I guess if Psy survives, that also makes mana with the Mox Amber, so can never be too sure. Don't really see a great reason to play out a 1 1. Just gonna hold them until after Psy. Alright, Emery. Could have been a reason to run one out there, so now we're regretting it a little bit. Could just play the Mox Amber now, I suppose. We miss out on one Thopter, but we get to play Emery now, which is probably still worth it. Yeah, sure. And then I could play another one mana spell, but I'm probably better off holding them until after Psy, since I can potentially, if Emery survives the next turn, play Antiquities, and then go Psy plus a bunch of uh, cheap artifacts in the same turn. Didn't mill over any artifacts to get back with Emery. Could of course always play Stone Cold for zero, which is actually kind of nice with Psy. But uh, this turn I think we're supposed to Antiquities. And I guess grab an Ornithopter. All right, it's pretty important that Emery survives here since we don't actually have more mana otherwise. But if she does next turn, 
is gonna be pretty sweet. Golos, that's fine. Find your field of the dead. Grab something nice and cheap. I guess a ginger brute will do. Alright, so we get to go sigh. And unload. So, play stone coil for zero. Get it back with Emery. Plate for zero. Play Ornithopter. And play Double Brutes. And cross our fingers that our opponent doesn't have a sweeper next turn. Because I'm pretty sure this is uh, gonna be lethal with the Antiquities hitting the third chapter. And yeah, opponent explodes. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a reasonable hand. So turn one, probably play Witching Well. And don't need any of these. Just looking for more payoff cards. Psy, Antiquities, Steel Overseer. Facing Knight of a Legion, it's an aggressive black deck. Alright, um, I guess we'll play Emery into Mox into Witching Well. There's a Steel Overseer to potentially get back. No Antiquities, another Stone Coil. Don't think we need any of these. Alright, hopefully Emery gets to survive a turn. Red-black. Opponent passes, another Mox. Alright, so what are we doing? Could sacrifice Witching Well to draw two. Could play a Stone Coil. Probably just want to get back Steel Overseer here. And then... Could play a Stone Coil for two. Could also play Stone Coil for 3 if I'm willing to also play the Mox. But I might want to save that one if we need an extra boost of mana or to trigger Psy later. Midnight Reaper, sure. Alright, so my Stone Coil can become a 3-3. Three, three. Happy to send that one in there. And then if it dies, I can also get it back with Emery, so it's not too bad. Otherwise, we're probably just sacrificing Witching Well. Alright, I think I'm just gonna offer the trade, replay Serpent, and then grow it with Overseer afterwards instead of getting in one Trample now. I would rather have a larger serpent when we get it back here. And then I guess we'll play a 5-5. Five five. Don't know if there's an argument for tapping Steel Overseer right away. Or if it's fine to wait in case I need a 2-2 blocker. Alright, Phoenix isn't bad. Although we can still attack past it. Another Emery can also use it to maybe find more cards in the graveyard and then keep the original one, which doesn't have summoning sickness. Seems okay. Can also maybe start proliferating with the Karn's Bastion. Mindstone, sadly, Antiquity's gone. So, if I play Mindstone, I would have to play Mox Amber to then sack Witching Well. I guess that's okay. Alternatively, we can get back Ornithopter, so it starts picking up counters from Overseer. That's also reasonable. 
Maybe that's better, actually. Play Ornithopter. Um, I guess I can sack Witching Well now. On the off chance that we find another one drop we want to play with the Mox Amber and to hit our land drop. Alright, let's get in there. Pun can absorb three damage. Another Knights. They're gonna send in Phoenix, still on defense. Ginger Brute's okay. So Emery can get back Witching Well to set up or draw before we sack Witching Well to draw two. Seems okay. Another Brutes, I guess, is okay. I could play both, but then I can make them unblockable. But maybe that's still worth it. Could also think about the Karn's Bastion, but probably want to play these Brutes first. So we'll sag the well. Another Steel Overseer is probably better here than Second Brute. So we'll play Mox. Play Overseer. Play Brute. And then I could send in the Stone Coil, but this turn they could block and give Death Touch. So that doesn't seem necessary, I'm just gonna wait until next turn. So we'll pass. And then next turn we can set up a big attack. Sure. And Judith. And our opponent explodes. Next turn we can tap both Overseers. Proliferate with a Bastion, we still had one activation here end of turn, so they probably would have been uh, taking lethal if not close to lethal. I guess the Butcher does get to block Ginger Brood, but that's about it. Alright, sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and this is not a great hand, as we don't have any payoff cards. That being said, we do have Double Void and Well, which can help us find one of those payoff cards. So, we'll try it just uh, for science here. If we didn't have double void, I would definitely mulligan. So Steel Overseer would be good here, Amri, even Psy, and of course Antiquities. Eh, I'll keep an Amri. And we'll hold on to the Ornithopters for now. Don't really need them to play Amri next turn, and I might draw Psy. And then we want Ornithopters to make some Thopters. Opponent with Once Upon a Time. Apparently, Once Upon a Time, Veil of Summer, Oko and Field of the Dead are about to be temporarily banned from Historic. So opponent's maybe on a green-black The Great Henge deck with Regisaur. Alright, so don't really want to play my Void before Emery, since otherwise we mess up this Cry. So we'll just play Emery. Find Mox Amber, Psy, and a Witching Well that we can return. So not the best. Would have loved to draw the Psy, but uh, at least we can get back Witching Well, which can further help us find what we need. Which at this point is Antiquities, Psy, maybe Steel Overseer. More Voids. So I guess I would rather Scry 1 and then Scry 2. Uh, instead of the other way around. Could also get back Mox Amber and then just sacrifice Witching Well, maybe that's better. 
Yeah, let's try that. So we'll scry here. Mox Amber on top can go. Get back Mox Amber with Emery. And then sacrifice Witching Well. Don't necessarily have to do it now. But maybe I find a second Mox and want to cast something for one mana. Yeah, there's a Mox, but I'm not going to play it right now. So, this was kind of the issue with keeping that hand, is if we don't find enough of our payoffs, these Ornithopters don't look great. But it doesn't take much to uh, turn on this hand. So I guess we'll scry again. Ginger Brute is not good enough. And I guess we'll get back Witching Well. Can play it, sacrifice it. Alright, Antiquities, that's what we need. Might be too late, but hopefully it's not. So end of turn I'll draw that. And then uh, take it from there. Could always chum block with Ornithopter on Regisaur. If that's uh, necessary. And then get it back with Emery. So it's not like the Regisaur by itself is really a threat. It's mostly in combination with other cards. And yep, there's one of them, Galta. That one we can chum block. So, could have been a reason to play out Ornithopter to then chum block Regisaur earlier. But there's a reason why we wouldn't do that, Sai. So, I guess the plan here is play Sai. And then I can play Antiquities. After playing another Mox here. So we'll tap that for blue. Can play a Mox. Can also get back a Mox with Emery. Keep this one. I guess I might as well scry here. To set up my antiquities, find some artifacts like Steel Overseer, although that one might be too slow to be honest. Although I'm not sure what we're looking for to beat this Galta. But I don't think Steel Overseer is it. Play Antiquities. Mind Stones, Ginger Brutes, I guess we'll take the Brutes. Can maybe sacrifice that to gain life and stay alive. So yeah, if we had found the Antiquities maybe a turn sooner, it would have been good enough. But we'll see here. So we need to survive two more Galta attacks, essentially. Questing Beasts, I can block. Alright, so Chumping, Regisaur is easy. Probably want to use a Thopter token with that. So the Beast is going to hit me for four. Galta is going to trample over, and then next turn we also need to handle Beast. Although I can also next turn chump Regisaur and gain three. So, yeah, we don't have enough power to kill Galta either. So do I need to throw all my Thopters in front? So right now I'm taking 12, but then next turn I would be dead to the Questing Beast and Trample from Galta once again. Could also jump with Sai, but probably want to do that next turn. Maybe throw one extra Thopter in front. Just so I don't die to Questing Beast after gaining three. Another Antiquities. This one finds a Stone Coil Serpent. That would be pretty decent. As it can soak up additional damage, maybe block Questing Beasts. Now the question is, is it enough? So my guess is we want to chump Regisaur with Brutes, which requires two mana. And then put as much as possible in front of Galta while having enough to kill them on the way back. It's not an easy task. Emery, 
at two toughness. Is it better or worse than getting back? I guess getting back Ornithopter is better since then we get a free Thopter as well. So that's one extra toughness. So we can definitely do that. And then I can play a 5-5 five, five Stone Coil and still have two mana for Brutes. And I'm assuming I need to keep everyone back on defense. But yeah, I'm not sure if we're gonna have enough stuff to then kill my opponents, even if we do survive somehow. Great Hench. Gains them two life. Those all attack. So... Ginger Brute's Infernal Regisaur. We're at virtually five life. So let's say we... Block here, block here, block here. So we've got 9, 10, 11, 12. And then 4 Thopters. Man, we're gonna be so close to killing them. Because yeah, right now... I would essentially... Fall to 1. But then we only have 20 in the air. Emery can get back Ginger Brute, which is 21. But that's not quite lethal. If I find another Ginger Brute with Antiquities, we get there. Because the Moxhammer gets blocked by the Beast Whisper here. Or the Questing Beast, but I could of course trade Serpent for Beast instead. But then I need to sacrifice an additional Thopter to Galta, so... I think these are my blocks. So yeah, the two life from the Great Henge actually being relevant here. So I guess, in hindsight, what I should have maybe done is attack with one or two Thopter tokens last turn to get in that extra damage so that I could um, kill them here with 20 damage instead of uh, needing 22. So yeah, I guess the play is play Antiquities. And trying to find another Ginger Brute, since we have one in the graveyard we can get back with Emery. And we have exactly enough mana to uh, play both of them and make them both unblockable, thanks to the Mox Amber tapping for mana. And sadly, no Ginger Brutes. Just Stone Coil, Overseer. That's not gonna cut it. And there's no way we can survive on the way back. I can play another Emery, so I guess what if we take Mox Amber? This Emery can get back... No, that doesn't work. Yeah, I can play another Emery, keep the original one, but I still need to get back double Ginger Brutes. So the extra mana doesn't really make a difference. Yeah. Close, close, close. So had we attacked with a couple extra Thopters last turn... We would have maybe gotten there, and we did find another Ginger Brute, but it's not enough here. Can play a Brute, but I needed two of them. And I guess never mind, the Questing Beast also has haste. So I suppose it could have blocked the Brute anyway with the Beast. Yeah, so we wouldn't have gotten there regardless. But maybe my opponent missed that, I don't know. Oh well. So yeah, the game was winnable, which is kind of crazy considering how early they dropped Galta and how long it took us to find Antiquities. And yeah, my opponent forgot to block with the Questing Beast on the Ginger Brutes, so I guess there's a small chance we could have gotten there. Elements. 
GG's. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. This hand is awkward for multiple reasons. We don't have a payoff card, double Mox Amber without a legendary. So, it's an easy mulligan. This is an easy keep. And so what goes on the bottom? Probably the Stone Coil. Use Witching Well to find Antiquities, maybe. Turn to Overseer, turn 3 Psy. Emery's good. So I could put Emery and then mill over Stone Coil. Sounds good. Turn to Paradise Roots. So let's play Emery. Sadly can go Mindstone into Emery since we need blue mana. Also milled over Mox. Can be quite useful. Especially in combination with Psy. Ooh, nice spicy opponents trying to make Dark Seal Reactor work. Alright. I'm uh, intrigued. We also drew Mox Amber, so this turn could be pretty explosive. Can also play uh Stone Coil for zero if we wanted to, but now that we have double mocks, that's just better. If we just wanted to make a Thopter with Psy, if we want to use Emery without spending any mana. But uh, yeah, let's play Psy. Mox Amber. And then I think I'm just gonna get back Mox Amber and play Overseer this turn. And then next turn, these uh, Thopters can become a little bit bigger. Nissa, alright. Well, does die to the Thopters if they don't have anything else. So, what do we want to do with Emery? Another Overseer sounds okay. So I can play Mindstone. Get back, steal Overseer. And we'll kill Nissa. And then we still have two mana. We can either sag the Mind Stone to draw a card, or we can use Psy if something happens to my creatures. And yeah, my opponent concedes. Next turn we can make a bunch of 4-4 Thopters, and my opponent would just be dead on board if they can't interact. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a good-looking hand. Turn 1 Brute, turn 2 Emery. I think I'm okay to play Void turn 1, since I know I don't need more mana, since we have Mind Stone and 3 lands, so I'm just looking for more payoff cards. I guess I can turn down a Mox Amber. Alright, fine. Alternatively, we could have gone Island into Witching Well turn 1. And we might be up against a red deck, in which case the life gain from Brute could come in handy, although Emery's probably not going to survive. So if I want to use the mana from Mox Amber, I need to play Mox Amber first. So we can tap the Mox Amber for mana right away. If we played it after we play Emery, then it would be too late. Alright, so didn't mill over anything too useful, sadly. I guess Stone Coil's okay. So let's, uh, I think, play Witching Well over Mind Stone. Seems okay. Just to find more action, assuming Emery dies here. Double islands, no thanks. And we'll hit for one. So, we've got a lot of permanents in play for turn two. Shock deals with Emery, as expected. Well, 
Alright, turn to kill fiend is scary. Antiquities, alright, that's good. If I had played Mindstone last turn, we could have played it now. Uh, because Amory died, Mox Amber doesn't make mana anymore, so I guess we'll have to wait a turn to play Antiquities. But that's okay. And we'll stay back with the Ginger Brute in case my opponent uh, makes a giant Kiln Fiend I want to chum block. So yeah, the risk of keeping the Mox Amber on top was that if they do deal with Amory, our hand is pretty threat light. So I guess they're just setting up for next turn. I mean, the Mox Amber still turn into 5-5s, five but I can only have one in play at the same time. So this is an interesting choice. It's possible I'm better off with Ornithopter, as it can turn into a 5-5 five five Flyer. But I guess long term, I probably still want Overseer. And we'll pass. So I could take a pretty big beating from the Skill Fiend this turn. As first strike. If they also give a trample, trump blocking is no longer an option. So I also have to take that into account. Like if we get the opportunity now to trump block and prevent a lot of damage, it might be worth it. A Rimrock Knight to Urchin. Yeah, as it stands, I'm okay trumping Kill Fiends. Might not get the chance. So take 5, down to 15. I right, need to find a good artifact here. Alright, got some good ones. I guess there's a lot to like about Ginger Brute, as it can attack well, but also chump and gain life if needed. Alternatively, we could go for Witching Well to find more action for next turn, thanks to the Scry. I will have 20 power, but my opponent can probably chump block one of them. So, close decision. I think we'll go with Brutes. And then we can play Brutes, play Overseer, and have two mana for the Brutes ability. And we're technically threatening 25 damage next turn with the Antiquities, so they do need to keep some blockers back if they can't kill my creatures. Or they can threaten lethal now, I suppose. Alright, opponent's going digging. We see Fling, that's a spicy one with Kill Fiend. The early shock definitely took a lot of the wind out of our sails, as an active Emery would have been pretty sweet. Alright, so this is 7, 8, 9 damage at the moment, but that could easily change. So I think I'm just uh, jumping Fiends and gaining 3 to play it safe, and then there's a small chance we can still kill them for 20 damage. Alright, another Urchin, so that one's on Chumblock duty. And a big Stone Coil is a good follow-up. So we'll hit for 20, make him jump and play a 4-4 Stone Coil. Alright, hopefully we're not dead and then we can get across the finish line with the Stone Coil, maybe Witching while finding more action. Thud. Alright. So we're at 10. I'm okay trading Stone Coil for Kill Fiend if they offer. Although, we'll see. Just a Kill Fiend attacking. So, let's assume that they have nothing in hand. Next turn Serpent could turn into a 5-5. Five five and um, could put them to 1 and force them to chump. I feel like I, I can win a late game 
if I trade and just draw more cards with Witching Well and Mindstone. That even if I could potentially win by taking it, I don't need to take the risk. Alright, so start by drawing two here. Probably didn't want to tap my Mindstone there, but that's okay. Another Mindstone can go. Just looking for some of our payoff cards here. And then... I guess I'll pass. There's an argument for tapping Overseer right away, so they can't shock my Ornithopter. But then I guess they're not shocking my Overseer, so that works for me. Alright, Thud the Overseer. And yeah, it's only one damage, so it doesn't kill the Overseer, and my opponent packs it in. So, close game, Kiln Fiend is a scary card. Opponent maybe with a few too many Thud and Fling effects, and not enough actual burn spells there. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, with, uh, I guess, a keepable hand, switching well to find the third land, and then double Mindstone to provide mana to go with our Psy. Uh, yeah, Mox Amber seems great too. So probably want to keep Void on top and then draw the Mox Amber. And then next turn play Bastion since we don't need to scry since we know what we're drawing. And then we get to go Psy into Mox Amber into Mindstone. Facing a blue-white deck of some variety. Brutes, okay, but I think at this point we're just looking for Antiquities. Emery, Steel Overseer, the payoff cards. Opponent might have a response. Dovin's Veto the Mox. Eh, that's too bad, so we don't get to play Mindstone. I can play it now. I guess I can play Mindstone and then still sacrifice Witching Well. No great reason to do it now, unless I were to draw like Mox Amber plus a 1-drop. But maybe that's reason enough. Reason not to do it now is if we somehow needed to sack our Thopters in response to removal. But that seems unlikely, so... Yeah, let's sack it now. Stone Coil could play it for zero, but I think I would rather hold it. Against control decks in particular, Antiquities is very good since not only does it threaten to kill them, it also just uh, provides a lot of card advantage. Gotta watch out for Selva Wreckage in Historic as well, but it's usually not too difficult to play around it. I guess I want to start by attacking with my Thopters, could also send in Ginger Brute. But now we are getting to the point where my opponent can play 5 mana sweeper and I want to keep up mana for Psy activations. But I guess I still have double activation even if I play a Brute here. And I wouldn't mind a Settler Wreckage giving me more mana. So let's start here and attack for 3 and then keep up some mana. Not gonna send in Psy, don't want to lose that to a Settle. No, they're gonna settle me now, so I could sack two of them to draw with Psy, or I can just take the three lands. I'm kind of tempted to just take the three lands. And that's also why having a lot of basics is nice. And now I feel okay running out Steel Overseer, make sure to keep a blue in case of a sweeper. Because it seems less likely for them to play a 5-mana Sweeper, given that they just played Settle the Wreckage. Puts another Settle in the Graveyards. Alright, they had a Time Wipe anyway, so... I guess we get to draw one more card here. So 
So we'll refill with Psy. And I guess play Brutes and then still have four mana for Psy activations. So we're outdrawing the blue-white control deck here. The fairy shows up. I can no longer stand. Hold that thought. If we find another ginger brute, we can maybe kill it. Also gotta watch out for seal away, exiling Psy if we attack with it. So I'm okay. Sacking. At least one Mind Stone here. Yeah, it's like another one. Keeping some amount of non-creature artifacts in play to threaten with Antiquities is nice too. And there we go. So. Decisions, decisions. I do want to resolve Antiquities. My opponent has three mana, so they can easily have a Counterspell too. And we also want to keep up some mana for Psy. And I do want to play Artifacts pre-combat in case of Seal Away. So how about I just play Mind Stone here. And then... I'm probably playing Antiquities, but now I can attack. All at the Ferry. Time for plan B. Maybe I'm not supposed to play Antiquities. If I play Antiquities now, I only have like uh, one Psy activation instead of two. So maybe I just play a Stone Coil. can play Stone Coil for one, although that seems a little weak. If I play Steel Overseer, I have five mana left over, which is only two Psy activations. All right, I guess this is okay. Alright, I'm surprised that I was able to bait out the Absorb. I guess now we'll play Antiquities. Find... I guess Witching Well. Ascanta does transform, which is very strong with Teferi in play, of course. Time for a break. The fairy time raveler. I'm known for my excellent timing. So baiting out a settle before we reach the third chapter is actually a good thing. I've got time. But they've already gone through uh, two copies of settle. Don't think I sacked the Mind Stone at this point. Find Stone Coil. Alright, so... If I play Psy and they counter it, they could still settle me. The fact that they absorbed the Stone Coil also kind of implies that they might have more counter spells in hand. Probably still play Psy. Because with the sign play, attacking into a settle is a lot less devastating. So they do absorb. Fair enough. So we'll send enough at the fairy to kill it through at least one spot removal spell. Don't know if I want to send more than this. Could also finish off uh, Time Raveler. So could do this. If they settle me, it's not great, but then maybe next turn we can kill them with Antiquities. Sure. Alright, that worked. So now I don't want to overextend into a regular 5 mana sweeper, and instead just play more artifacts that can hit them with the third chapter of Antiquities next turn. Emery's great. And uh, I think I just pass. So we're 
probably not going to kill them next turn if we want to respect Saddle. But we might still... Alright, they showed us a Saddle, so now we know to play around it. I might still be forced to kind of attack for lethal to force them to use it. But we'll see. I think I hang on to these. So I want to attack with my actual creatures and not uh, normal artifacts, because I want to keep those to potentially threaten lethal with the future antiquities. So how about I just hit for 20 with the Thopters, which would put them to 3. They could take it, but then they're in lethal range in all future turns. Alright, so they settle me, that's fine. One, two, three, four. And I guess now we can rebuild with the Steel Overseer. See if this maybe baits out a counterspell. It did not. And probably just play Emery. Also resolves, and I'll keep Serpent in hand now that we have a lot of mana. If my opponent does play a normal sweeper, we can just drop a giant serpent, which hopefully is good enough. As they can bounce it with the fairies. There's five mana at the ferry, but only one settle left. So that's pretty key. I know my responsibility. Let's skip to the good part. And if Emery survives, we can spend a lot of mana drawing cards. Sure. So we'll just untap, I think. Although now I guess I could also sack Witching Well. It's probably fine. Do I sack a Mind Stone as well? I mean, it would be nice to find another Antiquities, for instance. Not a brute. So Emery can get back giant stone coils from the graveyard too. Um, can get back witching wells. Have a lot of mana. How about we play a 6-6 six, six stone coil? Which is enough to kill 5 mana to ferry with one attack even if they plus one more time. Resolves. Play Brutes. And then send both Brutes at uh, Time Raveler, I think. In case of a seal away. Although I suppose Seal Away also deals with the Serpent nicely. So it's a close call. But now I'm tempted to just uh, draw more cards with Emery instead of playing another Serpent in case of a time wipe from my opponents. But against Seal Away, Stone Coil would be better. Close call. Let's go with the Witching Well. There's Antiquities. Can't draw it this turn unless I sack Mindstone, which I guess works. Because if I force them to counter this, then they can't activate Oscanta, which is also a big deal. So that gets vetoed, but they can't Ascanta now. Keep up the pace. Hopefully no time wipes. 
We're gonna main phase Ascanta to go look for it. Find seal away. Yep, that also answers a stone coil. So that's too bad. Because then we can also not get it back with Emery. So finding a Psy Master Thopterist to sacrifice stone coil would be good. Do still have another stone coil in the graveyard, of course. So there's a lot going on. One more saddle left, but we don't know how many time wipes. So I guess we start by scrying two before drawing. I think we bought them both. Selfern Void. I can play. Another Witching Well. Maybe have to bottom that. Close decision. And now what? I guess I need to start pressuring this Teferi. Right, they do have the last saddle. Fair enough. So that works. Should have a couple islands left. So remaining in the deck. Two antiquities, one Psy, couple creatures. Yeah, I mean, they could just run us out of cards here. So Emery. Now probably wants to get back a big stone coil. Maybe bait out with the Overseer. So... Play a stone coil. For seven, and then play Ornithopter as well, I suppose, for a bit of extra pressure. And then Emery can also get back Brute from the graveyard, I think, to then... Apply a bit extra pressure if needed. And the Karn's Bastion can also proliferate. I mean, this might already be enough to force a time wipe if they have one. I guess there's no brutes in the graveyard since they got exiled. But yeah, if I already stopped her here and they time wipe me, then I don't have a ton of action. So it's a tough spot. They get a lot of looks between Ascanta and Teferi on tapping Ascanta. I guess I'll play it. So yeah, this is definitely a matchup that would uh, benefit greatly from having a Field of Ruin in our mana base instead of Karn's Bastion. They can also seal away Emery for what it's worth. But they're probably looking for another time wipe. The fairy doesn't bound serpent, but they have double seal away. Stand by and watch. No, I am not making this up as I go. Antiquities. Yeah, don't have high hopes for this. I basically need to have a side to sag the serpent so I can get it back with Emery instead of getting it exiled. Absorb, so I guess they're out of Dovin's Vetoes at this point. If I force them to seal away, at least they don't have mana to Ascanta, which is something. But let's see if we can find a Psy here. Mox instead. Don't know if I can still win if they just exile the Serpent here. Emery can get back another Witching Well. Uh, 
I guess I'll play Mox Amber. There's a chance they seal away Amory in response here. Basically need to find Psy and have mana to sacrifice Stone Coil still. That's not it. So are we done okay with uh, Stone Coil getting sealed away? I guess so. It's not like we have much of a choice. And I guess it's time to unload Overseers, hope they don't have a time wipe somehow. Because otherwise the Teferi is just going to ultimate and then it's going to be very difficult to win from there. Alright. Opponent has a lot of looks at another time wipe here. But the fact that they're sealing away Emery kind of implies they don't have one. Who knows? And with double Karn's Bastion, we can make these Ornithopters very large very quickly. That's more like it. Ascanta. Well, there's a time wipe. So don't really get the seal away on Emery end of turn then. Well, I think that's pretty much game over now. The game was close, it looked pretty good at the start. But uh, yeah, just one too many sweepers. There's Psy. And I have 10 cards left in library, so playing Emery is also a bit of a liability. They can just exile Emery with the Teferi emblem now. Yeah, so if this is a common matchup, adding Field of Ruin to the mana base is an easy addition. Would definitely help uh, deal with Ascanta, which without Ascanta, they never draw enough cards to keep up with all the card advantage. So, Teferi can emblem. They can slowly start exiling our stuff. And we would definitely deck before the opponents, plus if they have another Teferi, Hero of Dominaria, they can use a minus ability on itself to put it back in their library so they don't uh, run out of cards. So, yeah, we got the full blue-white control experience here. It is an interesting matchup, but once it gets to this stage, it's usually game over. So, good game's opponents. We'll be on to the next one. All right, we're on the play with a uh, pretty solid hand. Psy plus Antiquities is a beautiful sight to behold. Now the question is, do I play the Brute right now? I think I'm holding it to make an extra Thopter. But I probably play the Mind Stone turn two, because I might want to go turn three Antiquities and then turn four Psy plus a bunch of artifacts. Right, double islands. So this antiquities could get countered, hopefully doesn't. Cutthroats, alright. So my opponent is on a blue flash deck. So the chances of Psy resolving are pretty slim. So I probably just take the Overseer to have an extra threat. As much as I would like to take the Mox to go with Psy. Alright, Backup Antiquities is good. Ornithopter is good. So don't mind if this gets countered, I think. Sure. So now I guess I do want to go Psy into Ornithopter. Not quite presenting lethal next turn, but we've got a nice board presence now. I 
does not put back the sabotage. So they've got our plans. So I think we just hit for 15 and then could go Mindstone into Antiquities or Mindstone into Ginger Brute, we'll see. Don't think Sai wants to be attacking. No, opponent takes 15. That gets sabotaged. But we can make more Thopters, which can hopefully get across the finish line here. Alright, so we're in decent shape. That's fine. And yeah, opponent explodes. So yeah, the brutal efficiency of some of our cards, forcing them to spend a 3 mana counter to counter a much cheaper card sometimes, is uh, definitely quite valuable in this type of matchup, where uh, we only have a handful of very important cards that need to counter, but if we can play two in the same turn, we can put them in a difficult situation. So yeah, I think this uh, Mono Blue Historic Antiquities deck is probably one of the most fun decks I've uh, built this entire year, and I have been playing the deck for a while now just for fun, just because it does offer so many lines of play. It can play out like this combo deck that kills very quickly with Antiquities, but it's also fine playing a longer grindier game like we saw against the blue-white control deck. So it does offer a lot of different uh, lines of play all within the same deck, which is uh, what makes it so fun. And being one of the few decks that gets to take full advantage of Mox Amber also has its perks. So yeah, a really fun deck. Hopefully you were able to see that in the games today. So I want to thank everyone for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel. And you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.